Hi, I'm Ursula Sadiq, Senior Product Manager with Autodesk Plant Solutions. In this video, we're going to create block-based valve bodies and actuators. We will then assign a default actuator to a valve body, and then show how an actuator can be set depending on the type and the size of the valve. Continuing from a previous video, we create new custom component and then use the custom geometry option. We'll set the component category to valves. Notice there are two options under valves, valve and valve body. The valve body can be assigned a separate actuator, which is what we want to do here. We're going to set a description of custom gate valve body. This valve has two ports, and for this video, I'll create just one size. In the sizes tab, we'll select the model. We'll open the drawing we created in a previous video. Here, the gate valve is the block with two ports on it. We'll set the outside diameter as required, and we'll also set a size description. Then we'll move to the General Properties tab and set a long description. And now we'll save this item to the catalog. Next, we'll create an actuator. We'll create a new component, and this time set our category to actuators. We'll set a description of custom actuator hand wheel, set the operator type to manual, and the actuator type to wheel. Next, we'll set a long description after we create the component. Again, the sizes tab, the portis list is undefined because actuators do not connect to pipe. We can still select a model. And we'll pick the hand wheel actuator that we created in a previous video. Although the size is listed undefined here, you can add as many undefined sizes as you want. You can select a block and set a size description for each. For this video, we're adding just one actuator size. For the actuator height, we'll enter 6 inches, and for the width, 4. We can now save this to the catalog. Because actuator substitution does not make much sense with just one actuator available, we'll create another actuator. We'll give this one a description of custom actuator diaphragm, set the operator type to automatic, and set the actuator type to pneumatic. When we're done with our data entry, we will hit create to create this actuator. As with the previous actuator, after we create it, we're going to go ahead and enter a lot. Well, we're going to go ahead and select the model we want, in this case, the cone, and enter a long description and enter a size for the size. We'll also make the height and the width entries. In this case, it'll be a 12 by 12 actuator. And we'll save this actuator to the catalog. Now we can assign actuators to a valve. Here we have our new valves and actuators in our catalog browser. In the General Properties tab, after picking a valve, we can click Edit Operator Assignments. Though there are two valves in the catalog, this is the only one that was assigned valve body type. The other type is not listed because you cannot assign actuators to it. Clicking in the operator drop-down list, you can select the default operator. We'll keep the wheel as the default and close the mapping dialog. So what exactly does this mapping in the catalog do? Well, when you now add the valve body to a spec, the default actuator is added with it. Let's create a spec and use our new catalog to take a look. In the Spec Editor tab, we'll add this gate valve to the spec. We'll right-click on the valve and edit Operator Assignments. This time we'll see that one added hand wheel operator. This is because the pneumatic operator is not in the spec. We'll add the pneumatic operator to the spec. Although we don't see it on the spec sheet, if we edit Operator Assignments, we see that there it is in the drop-down list. 
Another thing that you can do with valve operator mapping is to assign a range of valve sizes to an actuator. To show this, we need more valve sizes. We're going to load the ASME valves catalog and select a globe valve and add it to the spec. We'll select a 150 pound globe valve. There's one. We'll add it to the spec. We can edit the operator assignments. And you can see the smaller sizes all share the same operator, where the largest, larger sizes have individual sized operators. And that completes our specs and catalog series for now. For more information on the commands and procedures covered in this video, please take a look at the Spec Editor product help. We we'll hope you turn, you'll tune in for more videos where we'll show you how to route and edit pipe, produce ISOs, and complete other plant design tasks. Thank you for watching.